Hi, everyone. Welcome to Show and Tell number 13. Um, New England Book Artists is excited to present some of our members um, with their artist books and their creative endeavors and give you a sense into how they think a little bit about their work, which is really lovely to get a little deeper look into the artworks that our group creates and for us to spend some time face to face a little bit, um, given the circumstances that we can't share these books in person. Um, so I'm excited. Um, the first person is going to be Stephanie Stigliano. Um, she is Neba, one of Neba's four co-founders and a very important person for us and beloved. We love, 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 love Stephanie. And she's going to share quite a bit, I would imagine. She, she does some teaching. She does a whole lot of things. So I'm going to hand it off and let Stephanie take it away. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. And thanks everyone for coming. Uh, it really means a lot. Uh, it's, it's really fun to have a sense of community. All right. So I'm going to share my screen without further ado. Um, and put this on. Um, all right. So I imagine that many of you are artists and I know that some of you aren't, but, um, it's really good to have art appreciators too. That's very important. Uh, so I'm going to go through this because there are three people sharing today. I, I'm not going to take questions uh, and because I don't want to take up someone else's time. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about are some things that I'm doing right now. Uh, this is the most recent piece. Everyone, everyone can see this, I imagine. Um, and Christina, you can just tell me if you're excellent. Okay. All right. So I've been doing a lot of teaching using jelly prints and jelly plates, uh, printmaking off the press, because I think it's a really fun and easy way to make prints in your own space. So um, these are things that I made. These are fish that I made um, with jelly prints and some collagraphs left over prints that weren't successful. So don't throw anything out. Are you, are you admitting Anita or I'll, I'll admit Anita? Your host, so you would need to actually. Okay, all right, I just admitted her. Great. All right, so um, I was teaching people how to make flag books and they made some flags. If you don't know what a flag book is, uh, here's a, a piece that I just finished the other day. It's called Current Events. Fantastic. Thank I you. love the single red. It's the red herring. There is a red herring out there. <laughs> yeah, there's herring quite a few there. red herrings trying to distract us from anything that we're really supposed to be paying attention to. Um, and so here's another example of it. Um, just having fun with the fish and um, of course trying to have a little subtle political message there. A few different views. Uh, when I'm teaching book arts, I really like to show people how to use different structures. Uh, many of them are based on the accordion fold. So the spine here, what's holding everything together is the folded part. And the flags are pieces of paper that I cut into the shape of fish. And the flags are two-sided? Yes. So when it moves, there's each fish has two different faces. Yeah. So I'll be teaching a class at Art New England this summer. It will be at Hamilton College. It used to be at Bennington College, but now they've moved One, to Hamilton five. College in Clinton. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the most recent piece that was kind of fun. Uh, these prints I made and they were rejected from a show. So I thought, um, all right, <laughs> what am I going to do with them now? So they started out as beautiful paper that my friend gave me. Uh, I'm just going to en enter. Someone else needs to enter. So I just admitted someone. Um, they started out as beautiful paper that my friend gave me. She made by hand. And then I did some rubbings on it. And then I painted it with Sumi ink. And then I printed on it. And it just kept getting worse and worse. And then I thought it looked a little better like this. And then I got the rejection and I thought, well, okay, maybe I can do something else with it. So uh, I made this book, which is called Swimming Through Air. It's basically a flag book uh, 
which is an accordion, accordion fold with things coming out of it. So it's like a pop up and a flag at the same time, sort of. Yes, yes. So parts are cut away and they come out this way. It turned out the paper was pretty uh, floppy, so it needed these uh, supports, which I added to make it a little bit more structural. That's a nice resolve of, of that, yeah. Um, so I put in some images of it as it opens. It, it really, it, it's not very good as like an opening piece, not like that flag book. It looks very good sculpturally open and then closed in different configurations. So the title Swimming Through Air kind of encapsulates how I feel about the past two years. We're all in a different place and it's really hard. We have to learn everything anew. Things that, things that we depended on, we can't do anymore. So this was, this was an additive process. I just, as, as you saw, I was transforming the print and then adding collage like these are um, torn up bits of my mother's letters. Um, there's some pieces of music there. There's some drawing, there's some paper with leaves in it. Um, just kind of a mishmash of things. I guess it really, that's kind of like the inside of my head. It's got a lot of noise. There. The black is helping seed it somehow, though. So it does feel dimensional, like a, a three dimensional space, you know, because of that dark. And, and the highlights are definitely like the jellyfish are definitely projecting outward. So I think it works good. I like it. Oh, thank you. They're, they're, yeah. Things are moving and they're happening, and we are trying the best we can to tread water. Um, <laughs> Here's an earlier piece that I made. Um, I put this in because I really like it and it, it, it's very hard to show, but video seems to show it pretty well. Cool. Mm. These little origami or uh, there's other names for them too, but basically it's a piece of, of paper that's oh. folded. Oh, cool. Then there's the other side. Fantastic. And those are Enzo's, like Enzo shapes, those circles. I don't know what There's those a are. technique called, called Enzo <laughs> that you make these uh, ink circles. It's like Maybe a meditation. That's what they are. Christina, that's what they are. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so, what is uh, the medium? Is that is just so any ink? Uh, that's Sumi ink. And I, Sumi I, ink. Okay. I wet the paper and then painted on it because I wanted those little uh, weird uh, hairy bits. I don't know why that seemed to be where the ants lived. So. Fantastic. So here's a still of it. Uh, so there's, it starts out with cans on paper and then the insects. I thought of them as kind of jewel like, like people don't like insects, but they're really, they can be very beautiful and they do things good. They do good things for our earth, even though they're very small. Uh, here's another piece with the same structure. Uh, these are, jelly prints and then I put cut up brush paintings that I had done on top of them. So mead is a alcohol? It's a mead like a, a made from wine? Honey. It's made from honey uh, and since I had the bees in there I thought oh, I'd have I like the sound of mead and moonshine. Mm -hmm. It sounded kind of magical and this piece was made in the summer. So I thought that was kind of like, a, well, this piece, this is one side of it. It's very cool and at, at night. Mm -hmm. And the other side um, is kind of warm and honey-like. So that was my thinking. There's well, a uh, moonshine in me does produce um, a warming kind of interesting <laughs> sensation. <laughs> so that well, kind of does, you know, warms up the back of your throat going down, definitely. Yeah. Um, and, and I like this structure because you can, it, it's really fun to play with. It just people like to hold books. That's one of the reasons I make them is that people can play with them and hold the art in their hands. So here's another example of it just in its many configurations. Those are Luna moths and orchids. 
Beautiful. All right, so the next piece and the last piece I'm going to show you is, it's not a book, but it's really inspired by words. I was, uh, um, well, I participated in this show. Um, it's been a whole process where artists read poems that were put to us anonymously, and then everyone chose a poem. I chose this poem. It turned out to be written by Julian F. Smith, and it's so beautiful. It really inspired me to, I wanted to make a book, but the place where it's going to be exhibited needed wall pieces. So I've I made uh, jelly prints on uh, handkerchiefs and different kinds of paper. So here's one version. Um, here's another one. You can see that they have these arcs. Uh -huh. The poem is about driving in the rain. So, uh, okay. so I thought that the series were kind of uh, like book pages that I would put together. Then here's an example of what I also wanted to show, which is horizontal. To, it's kind of like a film strip moving through the landscape, although this is the central image of looking through windshield wipers, trying to figure out where you are on the road and trying to drive safely. Meanwhile, really being distracted by how beautiful the rain is and how magical the landscape can look, transformed by like, you know, lights, car lights, shining on the road, which you're not supposed to look at, you're just supposed to drive. Uh, so, but this was too wide for the show. So I- Can um, you think of it as a scroll? Or uh, modify you know, it and make potentially would, a scroll? Yes, actually, I, I am going to frame it with, I'll make some new versions of these little, uh, they're kind of like white lines on the road or film strip, but um, definitely a scroll is the, is the way to go. I couldn't hang it in this show, but. I like the color palette and the mood of it, definitely, yeah. And the, the curvatures moving in and out when you change orientations is fascinating too. Even when you just make the circle back, but like I like, like, like here on the top where they're in different orientations, that works nicely, I think. So uh, just make this beautiful. a little bigger so that you can see. Um, so I was thinking- I ask for the poem, is it possible? Well, is I don't have much it work? with me. Okay, you I don't have it with it you. Okay. With me, um, but I am going to meet with the writer or, and we're going to have a conversation and I, I will ask him if I can put it on my website because I think to it, the poem really adds so much to the images. Yeah. But I like the collaborative aspect of this too. Yeah. yeah. So, so it will be in a show at uh, Malden Access Television, which is now uh, UMA Gallery and there's going to be a reception. And I imagine they'll probably put some of the information, maybe even having the poets reading the poems and showing the art, but uh, I'll have to put that on my website at a later date. Uh, Forward it to me for the newsletter for April 1st too. Okay, thank you. Great. And then here, just a little plug here about some workshops I'm teaching Art New England and then, uh, that's going to be prints to books. And then Truro Center for the Arts, I'm teaching two classes, one for adults, a Carborundum Colograph, and also a workshop for kids about drawing. So, oh, fantastic. So, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing this and get back to seeing all of you. Thanks for listening. Um, and I'm really looking forward to hearing Susan and Ernst talk. So thank you. Very good. I enjoyed that thoroughly. I um, wanted to hear a little bit more before we step away from you because it doesn't appear that Anne's joining us. So we have plenty of time. Um, I want to hear a little bit more about um, what kind of book classes, what's, what's going to happen in the, book, the next book class at Art New England. Tell me a little bit about um, actually what that kind of specifically is going to be. Well, it's going to be uh, off press techniques, even though they have a press there. I. Uh, lately, I've just to teach people things that they can do on their own, yeah, inexpensively, non-toxic, uh, without buying a lot of expensive equipment. Um, printmaking is wonderful, and it's really fun to use a press, but you know, it it can be expensive, and yeah. it's very heavy. Yeah. Um, so we'll be doing jelly printing and uh, sumanagashi marbling, and awesome relief printing 
lino cut because no one will get splinters from linoleum. And um, we'll be using Akua inks, which are very versatile and they're non-toxic. They're just beautiful colors and they, I find them very easy to use. Uh, yeah, I like the way they stay active longer so you can get yes. some interesting blending yes. effects. Yeah. Right. Um, I think, Lori, did you have a question? I don't have a question. I just wanted to let oh. everyone know that Stephanie is the reason I make books. I took a workshop with her at Art New England many years ago. I can't yeah. remember what it was and in, in artist books and I've been making them ever since. Yeah, beautiful books, beautiful books. Um, Liz, I think Liz Reiser has something to say. Oh, she, you're muted. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah, I um, have learned from Stephanie as well. And um, her, your teaching is so beautifully calm and attentive. So um, I also put the link to the Art New England um, workshop that you're offering in the chat if anyone wants to read more about it. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Our, our Zen-like calm concept was key to the beginnings of Neva. Um, because the four, you know, Marie and Anya Gilmore and Stephanie and I, uh, we had some differencing opinions on how things, to, you know, so it was a little, a little hectic at first, but she was a calming, wonderful influence. I had shown, I never had met her till Neba actually came together, but I had done a lot of book shows with being together and I saw her name over and over and I was very familiar with her work, but I had never actually got to meet her. So I'm glad I, I now actually know you. And that's actually exactly the same story for Susan. Um, Susan Gaylord is um, another great NEBA member that's going to share her really um, special and unique way of making books. And she does a lot of teaching as well. She has a lot of video, instructional videos. She teaches from um, children all the way through to adults. She's known as a calligrapher. And um, she's fantastic. So let me uh, go ahead and pass over to Susan, the control panel here. I'm going to pin you. I'm going to make you host. Hey, Susan. Okay, so I am going to, um, I'm thrilled to be here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so I'm Susan Katoshinsky Gaylord. Um, I started making before I made books I did calligraphy so I was an English literature major in college I um discovered calligraphy in my late 20s I fell in love I became obsessed I did work for exhibition I did work for official work and I did that really seriously for about eight or so years and then I started to do things that were a little bit more personal and when I had my first child I did a series called childbirth journey and it was 15 pieces, excerpts from my journal about um, pregnancy, childbirth, and after. And I had an exhibit of them here in Newburyport. And when I brought them home, they were framed about 24 by 30. When I brought them home, I really, I didn't want to hang them on the wall. I didn't feel that they were something that really belonged there on an ongoing basis. And <clears throat> part of it that it was, I mean, one, it wasn't just that I was sharing my feelings, but um, it was just that it just was something that you just didn't necessarily want to see all the time. So I went from there, I started to look for another format for my books. And this is just a little bit to how I got into it. So I wanted to find another way to put my books out there. And I started to do, came up with handmade books. And so this is something I wrote in the, probably the first couple of years I started to make books, which I still think really holds true. Books are intimate. They welcome personal encounters. Books are humble. They fulfill their potential closed as well as open. Books have depth. They are rich with the, with the, with the possibilities of endless variation. And books have spirit. They are dwelling places for our thoughts and dreams. Lovely. Um, so I went from there. So then I became like, bookmaking is like the greatest thing in the world. Everybody's got to do it. So. <laughs> I started with classes for adults called Art Making for Everyone. And then because that all was happening around the time I had my first child and then he started preschool and school, I did spend about 20 years going to schools, giving bookmaking workshops. My focus was, I used to teach 
like often I would have classes of 50 kids at a time, sometimes seven classes a day. It was super intense. And um, I focused on connecting with the curriculum, simplicity, obviously, when you've got that many kids trying to do things at once. And then towards the end, my big focus was recycled materials. And then I, when I after I stopped teaching kids, I was doing adult workshops. Now I don't really teach anymore, but I do still use my, I have a YouTube channel. And so this was, these were all samples from a book called The Joy of Making Books. And again, everything is recycled materials. Fantastic. Look and at then the, I, how many structure, different structures are there, you think? Um, I don't know. There are variations. There's, I mean, there's accordions, there's stick bindings, there's um yeah. the hot dog book the uh -huh. kind of thing that we're doing for the zines there's lots of examples of those a slap book from china because i also did a lot of research into books from different cultures when i was teaching and yeah. i would show samples of of books from different cultures and then i still do things occasionally so this was a series i did during the pandemic there are seven books and the joy of making books is just basic this has got content in in them and the idea yeah. So now I'm going to get into the books, the work that I'm most known for, and that's been kind of the mainstay of my calligraphy, I mean, of my bookmaking has been the spirit books. And I made the first one in 1992, and I'm still working on them now. I'm on like 103, I think. Oh, before I forget that, what I do now for like things that are more book-like, I sort of don't have the patience to do handmade artist books, and I don't like doing editions. So I've actually been doing a lot of books that I, I mean, they're my concept, illustrations, writing, design, everything, but I have them printed. And so now I'm doing them through KDP Publishing, which is the Amazon publishing thing. Um, so, I like your books and I have quite a few of them mm -hmm. and I'm probably going to add them to the NEBA library for lending so that um, people can enjoy them. Yeah. Okay, well, that's great. Yeah, it's, it's, and I also like the fact that they're very, I mean, they're accessible. They're the price of a regular book. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so the spirit books came, I was already making books when I started to make them. They came kind of completely separate from the bookmaking. And from the time I started trying to work with natural materials, it was about four years till I made the spirit book. And it never really dawned on me to incorporate book form with it. So it started in my garden when we did, we were in the house a couple of years, we did this massive pruning. We had a huge pile of sticks and vines and branch, all kinds of stuff. And I just felt so, such a connection with them that I knew I wanted to do something with them. Show and tell. Um, and it was, um, I right around the same time was when the, Joseph Campbell was interviewed by the interview series with Bill Moyers called The Power of Myth. And one of the things he said was that mythology is based on the idea that there's an invisible world that supports the one we see. And I felt like that these pieces were somehow representing that invisible world and that this sort of this deeper interconnection of nature was kind of represented and symbolic in all these pieces. So I tried all kinds of things. I was kind of stacking them and making sort of sculptural things. And then sort of one day, like just out of the blue, I made the first spirit book. Uh, so it has a cradle from grapevines and the book rests on top of it. Um, and so I, I kind of keep that approach to the books. I don't sketch anything. I don't plan anything. They just pretty much evolve. Um, and I named it, I gave it a number. I knew right from the beginning that this was going to be like a long-term series. So the books, the spirit books, I consider have like three parts. So there's a book and that rests on a cradle and that sits on a, on a stand that's made of binders, board and paper. And so the entire thing is, is the spirit book. When I exhibit them, they're, they're exhibited more like sculpture. They just kind of sit there. You can't touch them or anything, but in all cases, you can lift the book off of the, um, off of the cradle and and turn the pages and the pages are all um they're they're just slight variations so i look at them and they're, they're like a meditation so in this case like the next page might have the arrows that are going down here they would be going up or the bead would be in the place of the thing so there's minor adjustments and differences on every page and that book is this is from I had a show at the Arnold Arboretum and this was a show there and I wanted to use materials from there so the base of this is a cradle that I made from 
the um, sweet gum or liquid amber tree. And so I gathered them in the fall, kept them in my studio over the winter. They kind of cured and turned kind of a brownish gold um, and then um, became the book. So, and then this is another one that has a cradle that's made out of pieces. So this one was much earlier. This is number 27. That one was, I think, number 99. Um, and this is made from the horse chestnut. So if you look, one of the things I think about this is like, I think there's a feeling in a lot of the books that there's some place outside of our daily, like, you know, that it's something that you have to go for a walk in the woods to find or to be exposed to. But I pick that on um, the, st the street that I live on. It came from the, that great big horse chestnut tree. And if you look at the thing, the blossoms, the flowers at the kind of the end there, that's what becomes, um, that's what becomes the horse chestnut and the conquer. And then there's, there are stems that attach that to the main stem. And that's what goes together to, they were falling on the ground. So I gathered them all up and tied them together. Um, the inside of that is spirals, which are my like favorite thing. I have to stop myself from just having every book have spirals in it. They're the most enjoyable for me to stitch. And the thing is that I make all the stitches ahead of time. I mean, I make the holes ahead of time. So it's a very kind of calming process to just, you know, where the, you know, where you're going, you don't have to think. And it just goes from one, um, from one hole to the next. Uh, and this is one, this is number 94. So they all have numbers and they all have names. This is called Timeless Union. Um, and I just wanted to show this because of sort of, I tend not to think that much about the spirit books when I'm working on it, but a lot of times I'll do something and there is some kind of analytical thinking. So the, um, the, the kind of curving of the branches, I first thought I would echo that on the pages. And then, um, then I decided that wasn't what I wanted to do. And part of it is that, um, the phone's ringing in the other room. Um, this looks more like a drawing to me. And I kind of want these to feel like there's not much done with the hand um, or like that kind of my thinking. And one of the things is John Greenleaf Whittier, who's a poet who's from the 18th, 19th century, who's not that well known now, but he, his home is in the next town over in Amesbury, Mass. So I'm quite familiar with him. And he wrote, nature speaks in symbols and in signs. Mm -hmm. And I kind of think of it that what I'm, after I did this, I'm kind of thinking what I really want are symbols and signs, not something where I'm interpreting um, and or echoing what's going on there. Yeah. Um, and so this is just to show that none of the, the backside of the stitching never shows. So I, they're always putting two, two, two pieces of paper together and then there's somehow either a little bit of dab of glue or a little bit of stitching on the edges so that you don't, you turn the pages, you never see the backside. Um, and then this is, this is kind of the back of one of the books. Most often I cover up the bindings and I don't remember if this is something I left that way or um, it was just in process, but I'm really like a terrible binder. Um, it's I show it on tapes. The great thing is that all the things that I don't really like, I came to books as a vessel for content, not as the books themselves. I've never been interested in making blank books, for example. But all the things that you want to do in a proper book, you don't want for the spirit book. So I, the pages are all torn; they're not even. The books, if they're if they're kind of not exactly lined up, it doesn't matter with the pages. You normally would want a book to close flat. I want it to splay open so that it can be can be part of the inside can be seen. So it's kind of a nice connection between what I my working methods and um, what the result is. So this I'm going to show you just a few books. This is one called Earthly Radiance and the. Um, the edges are all grapevine. It's resting on grapevine cradle, and they're all tendrils from grapevines that they sewed onto the edges of the pages. This is one just to show that, like sometimes the piece itself comes of is kind of sculptural and comes. So that's just one piece of wood, and that I get them from all kinds of places because this one actually came from Mike at the tree dump in Newburyport. Do uh, well, people it's... contribute because they know you make these? Occasionally, not a whole lot, which probably in a way is a good thing, but occasionally, yes, <laughs> show up. 
What, um, where are you, are you making your papers or are these just no, amazing the papers, papers you've come handmade. across? The papers are all handmade papers, but not by me. Okay. So I use They're a lot beautiful. from yeah. Mexico, from Nepal, Bhutan, and then some from paper makers, um, hand paper makers today. Uh, Velma Bolyard, I'm not sure if you're familiar with her work, but I've done things with her papers. Yeah, beautiful. Um, this is uh, birch bark that I found at the beach. And then um, I had taken a, a jewelry making class and I, again, the spiral thing. So I made a whole bunch of spirals. I didn't know what I was gonna do with them, but I ended up putting them in this book, which I, which I really like. And then this was grape, uh, I mean, not grape, uh, blackberry vine and lilac roots that I was digging up some plants in the garden and had the roots. So I don't treat them at all. I, one of the big decisions in the beginning was whether I you know, somehow spray them or encase them or something, but I really want them to be as natural and organic as possible. So I, they're just as is. Um, and then this- Have I just you noticed, show, just out of curiosity, have you noticed any issues with degrading over time or is that part of the idea of letting it become what it is? I, that's part of the, I mean, that's part of the idea. I, occasionally bits will, some of them, like I don't, I kind of maybe brush them off, but I don't do a lot. So some of them do shed, uh -huh. um, but they've never shed anything significant. And then the other thing in what you, cho what I choose is like, there's a lot of things that could be really beautiful, but they are too fragile or, I mean, it needs to hold up to a certain degree. Yeah. Um, and then this, I just want to show you. One of the things is I've a lot of the books have stayed with me for a long time, so I they do change over time. So this was this was Spirit Book number forty, and I never really liked it that much. It it just it it looks kind of okay here, but it was actually kind of shifted around a lot. It was a little shaky, and I had used a, I used very little glue on the books, and I had used quite a bit on there, and the pages were just stiff. I didn't like the way they felt. So I got this idea that what would be, what would really improve it is if I could in between each of, the, like to each of the pages, I would just make another signature that would go in. Um, so in between, I would put something like a signature in between. The thing is there were like 40 something sections, like maybe 45 or something books that I, signatures I have to make to go in there. So it took me a while to get up the oomph to do it. Um, but so each book, so the pages on there have, um, pinprick holes and beads and then I they were like gently glued not sl slobbering the glue, kind of glue on it but just gently glued on and then it ended up to be this so it was really worth the effort and then the base of that the cradle of that came from what was originally spirit book number 50 which had a much smaller piece on it which I didn't think really worked so I number them those numbers I won't use again but this one was so transformed that I renamed it spirit book number 96 harmonious rebirth yeah so, that's lovely and uh that's kind of that's that's the end here and I will stop sharing my screen if I can figure out what I'm doing here okay so fantastic I'm happy to there. So, and I'm looking now with the spirit books, I'm kind of, um, I mean, I'm, like everyone else, I haven't done that much during the, in terms of exhibiting or during the pandemic, but I'm trying to, fi I'm trying to figure out the, the spirit books really, um, if they're in a room together, they're really, I feel is a, there's something more going on than you see when you just look at an individual one. So I'm looking for opportunities and I don't, my preference is to show them without plexi or anything over them because I feel like there really is something communicating that gets cut off when that happens. So I'm trying to figure out. It really does change the experience to be under plexi, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so anyway, so I'm just giving thought to how I wanna proceed with them, but I still keep making them. Excellent. So. And you've you've um, you're going to be contributing one for um, the Portland Book Arts. Yeah, as well. a small one. A small. I went through a thing where I made some much smaller ones, thinking that they would be more accessible. Maybe more people could buy them, but that didn't. I, they really need to be. So this one's is it's really nice. 
but I still prefer like ones of a bigger size. So I stopped doing that. I was thinking that like if you're over in Arnold Arboretum again, walking around, um, well, they would get mad at you probably for taking without asking, obviously, but um, there's probably some miniature, you know, they have that bonsai section. Did the bonsai branches, when they go and prune them and, and clean them up, are they, uh, you know, they you can do like little teeny miniature, miniature. Yeah, versions. they may be too small. I mean, that would be more likely to be something that I could use yeah. in the book. Yeah, right. oh yeah, totally, yeah. But somebody yeah. just, actually, somebody just gave me um, a bonsai. Tree, yeah. So, when you're looking at them and you're not in front of them, when you see them as pictures, you have no idea what scale they are, and um, there is a lot of intricacies there. So, I find it kind of interesting the idea of it, you know, not knowing, and you're just enjoying the shapes without even knowing if it's tiny or big. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Thank I've you. Always, I've always thought they were just fantastic, and I really enjoyed your suffragette book as well, and the the instructional books. Before I even knew knew who you were, I had bought those, so I, I've had quite a few. Uh, I've been a fan for a while. Thank you. Yeah. Thank Anybody want to chime in on bring in some conversation here? Since Anne um, didn't seem to be able to join us, um, we've got a little bit of time for some questions. I'm going to put us in. Uh, the big big view of everybody in the gallery view so we can have other people uh, join in and Carolyn has joined in hello Carolyn how are you feeling today awesome ah okay anybody um have some questions for our our two presenters I, I just have a quick question, um, Susan. Thank you um, for showing your beautiful work. Um, who who was it that you said nature speaks in symbols and signs? I couldn't John, write it. John Greenleaf Whittier. Okay, John thank John Greenleaf you. Whittier. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And he was he was a poet. He's a was a poet who had two like kind of major themes. One of them was nature, and the other was abolition. And he was very active in the abolition movement. Thank you. And if you want to go see his house, it's in Amesbury, Massachusetts. And his birthplace is just down the road in Haverhill. Wonderful. So thank you. You're welcome. Excellent. Anybody else want to chime in? I'll just say something about the suffrage book, which is that I I had originally I originally wanted to do, well, I originally was going to do something, and then I thought, I don't, I'm not going to bother. And then I um then I decided like this, that it was a hundredth anniversary. It's coming up. I wanted to do something. And I tried to find a quote to do. It. I was just going to do one thing in calligraphy, but the suffrage movement is so lengthy and complicated yeah. that it was impossible to find one quote or one person to represent it, one voice. Um, so I ended up finding 14 quotes. And then, so that ended up becoming a book rather than just one piece but it's if you you know depending on how much reading you've done it's just a, it's a fascinating history pbs has a special called the vote and the american yeah, experience really cool. currently yeah. so you can uh get some interesting old photography that you might not yeah. be able to see as often yeah and as they do in their ad they say there's somebody who says they say they gave us the vote and they didn't give us anything we fought for it yeah. We still have to fight for it. Right. Yeah. 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 Excellent. I wanted to let Gail know that I received her book safely. So um yeah, so we're as um as we have a NEBA table coming up at the Portland Book Arts Bazaar, which is in Portland, Maine on um, the 3rd of April. We've got some information on our website about that. We've also actually got information on the Suffragette. I did a feature on it. So if you wanted to check out Susan's book there um, on our website, or you, I'm sure you can Google and uh, find out a whole lot and visit her YouTube page because she's yeah. rocking the video scene in a big way, which is super cool. So, and I um, do have actually, I, I do have a website, susangaylord.com. There you go. Yeah, so you could probably buy books straight off your site, right? You can. You can. Is it is it better for you for us to do that or go to Amazon? It's better for me, and I also it's kind of nice to know it. it, it you know, yeah. you, like I could sign the book or 
Yeah, you get these little extra fun bits. Anyway, I think it's one of the things about doing anything through Amazon is you, first of all, they don't pay you that much. But second of all, you have no idea who buys your book. Yeah. So it's kind of nice to know. It's nice to know who, you know, where it's going. Yeah. Do you take calligraphy consignments? Like, not consignments. Um, no. People, like, asking you. <laughs> no. I no. mean, I okay. do think that I'll, I'll, you know, I'm kind What's of that consignments. What's the word? Yeah. Commission. anyway, Commissions. Commissions. Yeah, I kind of left. I mean, I do, I'll, sometimes I'll do things that just give them away to people, but I really, I really sort of don't want to get, I, I did that. That's past history. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. it's, um, yeah, I mean, I'm a different person now than I was then. So I think it would be a different experience, but yeah, oh, probably, yeah. Not do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Who, does anyone else want to share? Um, you got some fun facts or um, information before we sign off here that you want to like put out there? Um, I don't want to put people on the spot, but there's some really interesting people in the group. Um, I, I just like to, uh, Lori Moorhead, she uh, yeah. part of the uh, postcard exchange, right? The wish you were here leader. Yeah. 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 She's also yeah. a NEBA member. <laughs> she's um, a San Diego Book Arts person as well, uh, you know, is where she's coming from. So she's on the West Coast. Hi, Lori. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Yeah. Um, and um, I am a NEBA member and um, I'm excited. I'm going to be taking Stephanie's, um, I'm, what's the official name of the class? We're, we're going to Prince to Books, Line of Cut, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so I really enjoyed Stephanie's um, demo that she did for the Wish You Were Here project on, uh, I think you, you did reduction printing, right? Or was it? Yes. I yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I always intended to go back and do, you know, follow it and do my own and didn't. And then when I saw you were offering this class, I'm like, oh, cool. Because I work much better with deadlines and time constraints than doing things on my own. <laughs> Many of us do. Yeah, I agree with that statement, no doubt. Yeah. That was probably my favorite. Well, it wasn't exactly my favorite part, but the favorite part of Wish You, one of my favorites was the the classes that got offered and all the yeah. workshop demos and the video yeah. access and the printouts that came with some of those um so it's like a gift that keeps giving and exactly. a lot of that kind of information is you know i, I don't want to toot our own horns but neba is still getting around six thousand impressions a month for the wish you were here wow. that's how many page visits and you know people come and look around so it's not six thousand people it's six that like one person could probably look at 40 pages you know what i mean um but um it's still pretty impressive uh, the amount of activity that's ongoing and that's because these resources are still available mm -hmm. and you can go and check out and um, there's so many amazing uh, book artists in such a little like a little space you know it doesn't take much to to get to one site and see 192 different wow you know just wow okay yeah well, thank it you Lori <laughs> we, we will yeah. always appreciate that thank um, you very nice thank excellent. you excellent so Dawn are, are you going to be joining us in Portland have you made a decision so you're coming you got to turn your uh turn your uh sound on for us I did make a decision I am going to be there um I I actually bought airline tickets. I'm flying to oh, wow. Logan. I'm going to stay with my daughter at night. And the two of us, unless she jumps out at the last moment, the two of us are going up to Portland. She's been interested in wanting to take um, paper making classes. And there I'm is like, definitely at least one paper maker with a table um, from what I've heard. Good, good. So that that I can kind of hopefully rope her in and keep her roped in. <laughs> and um, I'm really looking forward to it. But I would like to talk with you a little bit more about how I could become a little bit more involved, maybe work the table or something. I, don't I know. have already made you an official badge. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> You're on it. Awesome. I want you on the table. That'd be great because I can't be on the table because I'm at my own table. 
Good to you. And I have a feeling that um, Alice Stan has a table, so she won't be able to help, but she'll be there. And the woman that's running it, Annie uh, Lee Zamerl, is um, our NEVA member too. So she's going to, we have the presence there, but some people are, are there just doing their own thing and some are going to do NEVA things. And hopefully, who knows, maybe we can send your daughter on a lunch run. But she was on time and then, and then we'll, and then she can't say no. She, um, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's, yeah, she's at an existential place in her life right now because she's been, um, she's been teaching dance for like maybe 14 years, uh, right in Central Square and um, COVID threw her for a loop. And yeah. You know, yeah. her, she's, she's like, maybe I'm going to do a career change. And she, she found her book, uh, her paper making set that she had when she was 10. And she's like, I'm going to take a paper making class. So it's like, okay. Yeah. I would love there to be some more people producing that have um, advertised enough for people to sell. I have a hard time when I'm looking for really juicy, good stuff. Um, there's not as much of it out there as you'd think. Mm -hmm. So there is a little window there that maybe she could fill. Who knows? Would be fun. Thanks. I'm looking forward Thanks. to hanging with you, Donna. Excellent. And I look forward to seeing you guys on, on the third. Liz. Oh, I think my question was answered. Um, somebody put the link into the chat. Um, I think. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. If you, um, we have tons of links on the web, our website. It takes you, you know, one step Is further. your website um, in the chat? Um, NewEnglandBookArtist.org. Um, uh, we could somebody. I'll put it in right now. Type it, type it in for us. Um, I'm doing yeah, it. I, I, I don't really think about doing that normally because it's usually we're talking to ourselves. But there are I know. new people in here. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not part of this. So yeah, yeah. Oh, we are always welcome new people and excited for non-members to even visit, which is great. Yeah, excellent. I think we. Uh, let's see. Anybody else have a quick, um, another quick comment? We're going to go ahead and uh, call it a day. I don't know what happened with Anne. I'm sorry. She couldn't make it, but um, we had a great, a, a great experience. So it's okay. Thanks so much. Okay. Excellent. Really, really fun. Great to hear you, Susan. Same here. Yeah. Thank you. Our next, our work, next everybody. oh, great. Yeah. Our next Zoom is going to be, um, the show and tell will be our zine swap results from last Sunday, this past year, you know, so we haven't really um, debuted, but we've got um, about 13 or 14. Um, I can't remember exactly, but somewhere in that neighborhood and I took a lot of pictures and we're ready to rumble to share the, with our, our world and uh, wow, excellent. Have a great week. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.